the average American spends over half of their life working. Now, what this suggests, apart from the fact that maybe we work a little too much in America, is that our organizations play pivotal roles in our daily lives. This is why scholar Charles Perot has suggested they are the key phenomenon of our time. And I think Perot's point is critical when we consider that our public organizations may very well be sick. According to the 2017 Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey, 60% of public employees are unsatisfied with their public organizations. 78% claim work is their biggest source of stress. And over 47% claim that they have inadequate resources to complete their tasks. Now, some of these people are in charge of our taxes and criminal records. Do we really want them stressed and unsatisfied? If we are going to ask people to devote their time, their energy, and their livelihood to our organizations, it is vital we ensure they are healthy. And that's why I wanted to create a wellness quotient or a standardized measure of organizational health. No such measure existed. And health at the organizational level is a very difficult concept to, defi uh, to measure, excuse me. So I knew if I could assemble this quotient, it would provide us with all sorts of organizational development and design opportunities. In order to build the quotient, I first needed to identify the core components or the key building blocks of an organization. And as I looked through the literature, what I realized is while organizations are complex, at the core, they're all the same. They're made of structures, culture, and people, and that's it. And it's the interaction between those is what gives us an organization. So I had my WQ factors, but I still needed to test the quotient, and I needed to explore the relationships between these factors with other organizational health proxies. In order to do that, I used the Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey because it successfully captured employee interactions with these three components. I ran a number of data analysis tests, and the results were extremely valuable for the future of our public organizations. First, organizational structures were found to be the strongest predictor of organizational health, not people, not culture. So much of the organizational health development literature suggests that creating healthy people is the way to create a healthy organization. What my research suggests is that by creating healthy structures, it will enhance the health of the people. So start by creating healthy structures, i.e. rules, policies, procedures, things of that nature. Next, the WQ was found to be an effective and viable measure of organizational health. So what this means is that we can now rank and classify public organizations along a health spectrum according to their healthiness. It also means that the WQ can serve as a accountability and transparency measure for our public organizations. And we all know in today's political climate, a little bit more accountability wouldn't hurt. In closing, our health is intimately connected to the places that we inhabit. If we want to see a healthier society, we must start by creating healthy organizations. And I think this research provides us a great place to start. Thank you.